Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today we're going to look at a couple of lightweight web browsers. And, and what kind of brought this on was, you know, I, I got started on looking at different things with older laptops, you know, making them, um, you know, being able to get use out of an older laptop. And one of the things you may run into, or probably will run into, is limited amounts of RAM. Now, I am playing around with a laptop that only has 2 gigs of RAM, and while it could be expanded for more RAM, I want to see, uh, you know, with today's technology, with today's software, what can I do with that limited amount of RAM? Uh, and kind of looking over here, I've got, uh, you know, I, I went through... A, a big variety of different uh, different uh, web browsers and uh, compared the base amount of RAM and this is with you know just one window open um, all extensions disabled all all apps disabled if you have extensions apps that sort of thing um, you know just one window open what is the base amount of RAM needed to run that particular application now I did this on an arch installation depending on what the distribution is you may you know it may vary somewhat um, but at least it gives you an idea and I've I wrote this up in order of increasing amounts of RAM and the two that I'm going to look at today are Dillo and Midori and you can see that Dillo it only requires 21 megs of RAM uh, for, for single window open, Midori 37, so you're pretty light there. And as you can see, the list goes on and on and on. And Chromium here, look all the way up here at Chromium, 535 megs of RAM, you know, essentially a half a gigabyte of RAM just to open that first window. Um, and then, you know, right here underneath it, uh, Aurora, you know it was real close and then you know Firefox was kind of in the middle um, which is you know kind of surprising because it's been cr criticized recently for being fairly heavy on the uh, on the RAM usage but playing around with Firefox I kind of found that uh, uh, you know in its base configuration without a lot of extensions added it you know it's not too bad on the memory it's when you start adding all those extensions, you know, then uh, the memory uses really piles up. But you know, Chromium, you know, getting back to Chromium, you know, 535 megs of RAM for just a single window open. And you know, when I'm doing my research for my magazine articles and and my writing and and whatnot, you know, it's not uncommon for me to have a dozen different windows of Chromium open and you know a, a bunch of different Chrome apps so you know it'd be real easy for me to max out that two gigs of RAM uh, you know on Chromium without running anything else um, so that kind of you know what inspired me to take a look at some of these lighter weight browsers so that being said, let's just we're going to start at the bottom of the pile, uh, RAM wise, and uh, we'll start out with Dillo. And in this video, we'll look at Dillo, we'll look at Midori, and we'll look at some of the others in in a follow up video to this. So let me grab Dillo, and we will start with that. All right, so here we are with Dillo open, and the first thing that you notice is that the toolbar, the, the interface, it all looks like something out of the 1990s. Uh, it looks like the old Netscape browser, or at least in a lot of ways it does, or the, you know, the early, uh, the early Mozilla browsers. Um, so, you know, in some ways, you know, it's looking kind of primitive. At the same time, this sucker is lightning fast. Um, you know, just real quick here, of course, you've got right in here, you can, if you know the, the web address you want to, you can type it in there. you got uh, a real simple toolbar right here. Um, you got very few uh, 
tools that you can use right here. Um, you got a couple of options for CSS, image loading, do you want to load background images, what size panel you want to go with, uh, you can select small icons as well. Um, so not a whole lot of options there, but like I said, this sucker's lightning fast. So just do a search, just click on the little search icon there, type in what you're looking for. Let's see, uh, oh, we're going to look for Vikings. Uh, and you've got your selection of what search engine you want to use, Google, Free Dictionary, DuckDuckGo, Wikipedia, whatever. I'm going to leave it set on Google, click OK, and, I mean, boom, you're right there. Um, and loading up web pages, boom, fast. What you will notice when running... Dillo is the rendering of the web pages. Um, to be blunt, it sucks. Uh, and I think part of it is, is that it's, it's um, the CSS is not set up for dealing with this widescreen monitor that I'm running. Um, and also, it just, it, it just doesn't render well. But you know kind of going along with that is you know the rendering a lot of times is what slows us down as far as uh, speed goes so they're fa sacrificing how stuff looks for um, speed now depending on what you are searching for um, you know the kind of work that you're doing that may or may not make any bit of difference to you um, you know like say let's let's say you're going to Wikipedia to, to look up things okay yeah the uh, you know the images aren't too bad but mainly you go here to not looking at at images but you're going here for the text in that case you know what do you care uh, you don't care that it's not rendering the pictures the correct size and 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 whatnot you're here to you know look at the text in which case everything is just fine um, and you know just kind of scrolling through here you know uh, text rendering great so you know it, I guess the point of it comes around to if you are using this as a research tool you are not con uh, concerned with how the web page reads you're just you know you're out there looking for information this is a great browser um, you know for doing my research uh, this is great because most of the time I'm not concerned with images I am concerned with the information that I find um, so from that point standpoint great browser Dillo includes what I would consider just the very basic of what we come to expect as far as features in a web browser we always draw already talked about you know it doesn't always render uh, pages correctly uh, as far as uh, tools and that sort of thing, um, you know, you can go and open multiple tabs, open multiple windows, that sort of thing. You do have the very basic back and forward buttons, a home button, reload, uh, save. You can do bookmarks, and the bookmarks is pretty easy. The easiest way is to right click a page that you're on, click bookmark a page. Um, you can also do the save page as. Um, but if you go here then to bookmarks you've got a bookmark page basically and you can do you know you can go and classify them and sort them that sort of thing um, but you know whereas with say Firefox or Chromium we're we, we're used to all these applications and extensions that sort of thing there's none of that here it this web browser is meant to be a lightweight very fast uh, uh, web browser and that is it um, so you know depending on what your needs are that may or may not work out for you uh, uh, you know if you are not concerned with how things render uh, and just need something that's fast and a small memory footprint this sucker I mean it can't be beat as far as speed goes uh, if you need some of the other stuff uh, maybe this isn't the best browser for you um, now the next browser that we're going to look at, Midori, a uh, little heavier on memory. Let me go and move this out of the way. So Midori, uh, 
about 50% higher on memory use, um, you know, roughly at least, uh, 37 megs of RAM for baseline. But you do have some options there, some, some extension, and, and in some ways um, it may fit your purpose better while still being fairly lightweight. So let's go and open Midori and we'll take a look at that one. All right, so here we are in Midori. And the first thing that you notice is that it's a very clean interface. I mean, it's obvious that the developers spent uh, at least a fair amount of time making sure that this was a nice looking web browser, that it was, you know, nice interface, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, all that definitely shows. Um, Functionality wise, I mean, it, very simple, easy to use. We got some forward and back buttons here, a reload page, a bookmarking button, uh, web addresses displayed here. You can also search through there. You've got a little search box right here, which will, uh, that search will open in a new tab. You can, just by clicking right here, you can select what you want to use for your search engine, and then you've got a dialog box you can open for you know adding more search options uh, deleting some setting up the faults that sort of thing uh, trash basket there and then right here we've got some preferences um, you can also use this so that you can display a sidebar with the bookmarks um, or you can use that sidebar to display your history uh, downloads, uh, applications, that sort of thing. You can also add, import, export bookmarks from here, uh, clear your private data. It'll link up to your to a FAQ section on their home page. Um, and then down here at preferences, let me go and close that up right there. This allows uh, you know, you got some basic preferences. Not a huge amount of options here, but I think enough that it would satisfy most people. Um, you can set up different options for startup as far as do you want to show the speed dial a home page, last open tabs, which is, that's the default, and that's what I, what, what I like. Um, the, um, you know, it'll show the last thing that I was working on. Um, you can set your fonts here. Um, various behaviors, some browsing, uh, as far as toolbar styles, how to open new pages, um, how the new tabs behave, that sort of thing. Uh, networking options, privacy options, and this I like here is that um, you've got this option so that after, I'll say a month, a week, a day, whatever, um, you can delete the cookies. Uh, how do you want to deal with cookies, that sort of thing. And the same thing for the for uh, pages in your history. How often do you want to delete those? And then here we've got some extensions. Not a huge number, uh, but there are some extensions here. Some of them I think are really useful, uh, especially like this colorful tab here. Uh, it seems like a simple thing, but when you've got multiple tabs running, uh, really helps with with organizing and and you know quickly getting to the last tab you open. So basically, you know, let me open a couple here. Um, you know, you can see each one of these; it's a different color on the inside of the tab. So not a huge big deal or anything like that, but um, you know, it is useful. Um, and just kind of sliding through the list here, you can add an external download manager, um, GNOME shell integration, um, got some notes uh, here, save text clips from websites as notes, um, quick player plugins. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of these. Just here, show, show tabs in a vertical panel. That would probably be useful for a lot of people. Uh, toolbar editor. Like I said, not a huge number of extensions, but there are a fair amount there. Um, like I said, probably enough to satisfy most people. Um, and then different file types. Now, having worked with this past couple of days, um, you know, and and before I go on to that, you know, this is the default web browser for elementary OS and uh, and some other. 
uh, lightweight distributions. What I've been finding is it's it's usually fairly quick, um, and like I said, usually. Um, let me go to oh I don't know. So I mean, opening web pages, it's not it's definitely not as quick as Zill as uh, Dillo. You know, Dillo it you know the snap of a finger and you're there it's fairly quick not quite that quick but pretty but but uh, pretty good um, however you'll notice that you know unlike Dillo it renders stuff correctly um, you know let's go to Amazon here because uh, you're gonna have a lot of pictures on Amazon I mean see it's it's rendering things uh, for the most part correctly I have run into a few websites where I don't know if it was a Java issue or the way the pages CSS was was encoded or whatever, but sometimes it would not render correctly. Uh, but for the most part, Midori does fine. Um, I said not the volume um, and variety of extensions that uh, either Firefox or Chrome has, but a fair amount there. So. As an overall web browser, I think this is probably one of your best options if you want a lightweight web browser uh, while at the same time, uh, you know, you want everything to render correctly and uh, and that sort of thing. Um, now, I, ha I will say that, um, uh, kind of getting back to the speed thing, it's not as quick as Dillo. And I think Firefox and uh, and Chromium, they're either the same speed, maybe slightly faster, but that's assuming that you have enough RAM available to handle, you know, Firefox or Chromium. Um, and of course, you know, no big deal on that first web page open, but as you're opening more and more, start using those web applications on, say, Chromium, uh, you start burning through the RAM. Now, as far as getting either one of these web browsers, uh, both are available through your regular channels on most distributions. Um, I know that the uh, Ubuntu Software Center, you can get both of these. I do believe, though, that the uh, the version that is in, um, the version of Midori that is in the Ubuntu Software Center is somewhat outdated, so I will leave below a link to a PPA so that you can add that PPA for Midori and you know download the latest and greatest version um, for those of you that are on arch and arch based distributions you will find it in the regular uh, in the uh, in the regular repositories and there's also uh, there's also versions of both in the AUR so if you're on Archbase, you, you're good to go as well. Um, not sure about uh, about uh, Fedora and uh, OpenSUSE. I did a little looking around. I, I'm not exactly sure because I don't have a Fedora uh, partition set up right now, so I'm not sure on that one. Um, but like I said, should be available for most distributions. So definitely give these web browsers a try, especially if you want to keep your memory footprint down. And uh, like you saw, you saw how quick uh, Dillo was. I mean, that is one fast little sucker. Um, but uh, you know, Midori's got a lot of pluses in its uh, in its corner as well. So hey, on the uh, on the next. Uh, the follow-up video to this uh, will look at two more uh, lightweight browsers. I'm going to look at NetSurf, which is right uh, right here, and Quibzilla. Now, Epiphany, um, problem I have with Epiphany is how glitchy it's been on most of the distributions that I've run. Um, you know, I'm running Arch right now, and I tell you, uh, it is pretty much guaranteed that if I use Epiphany for more than a couple of minutes, it's going to crash on me. So I don't know what the deal is, um, but uh, uh, at least in my experience, Epiphany on on a lot of distributions is uh, you know it's unusable, which is a shame because uh, you know um, 
it's a nice looking web browser but uh, if it's if it's going to crash any all the time uh, it's not practical so anyway we're going to take a look at those next time uh, be sure to give a big old thumbs up to the video if you liked it please subscribe if you are not a subscriber and uh, I hope to see you all on the next video thanks a lot